Daddy long that game. And shout out to Red Light Crew. Hey, you're one of 12 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. Yeah, you know what? The, to define that uh, uh, better, um, I think the key there is... Uh, I just lost my trend of thought. What's up, Nation? Real Life episode 139. Tyler Remchuk alongside me is Bag Milk and Wanye. And if I had to sum up today's podcast very quickly, it would be fewer people, new studio. Yeah. We're finally back. We're down in the basement, the uh, new Nation Network studio that Dustin Nielsen and Two Guys and a Goalie recorded from. Oilers Nation Radio did last week, but it was a little bit worse sounding than this. We got a bit of an improved sound this week, and uh, things are starting to take shape down here. We're moving along. New mics, even. New everything's. Wow. It's the, in, in software program, you have the 70% solution. Mm. Don't waste time developing 100% of the problem. Launch at 70% and then make it better as you're in market. I'm just happy that we're in here because we've been talking about this for a long time. So to actually be a recording of real life in the podcast studio is very exciting. This was this long ass project started in June of last year. And Chalmers of Real Life fame yeah. and I, I came down here like, I'm going to demo this, get this old weird basement little brick whipped into shape and make it half of it into a podcast studio. During the time we were down here doing renos, a second construction project started to expand the kitchen of Little Brick to have a full on sub kitchen in the basement. They went wild on that side of the house. Absolutely. It's got plumbing. It's got walls. It's got everything. And our podcast studio just <laughs> shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And the budget for it shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. <laughs> But we're in, and we have a dedicated space. Is probably what two hundred square feet? Something yeah, like that. yeah, I, I would say, say somewhere around there. Um, I'm excited though. There's still there's still ways we're gonna improve it. Though we yeah. got some soundproofing. We still need to put up all that yeah. stuff. So hopefully we don't hear the cheese slicer from the prep kitchen at all today. Well, and they also helpfully because we did soundproof level one. We'll say yeah. So the walls are some sort of special thing that costs a lot of money that we were not budgeting but then these motherfuckers ran furnace ducting through here because we also installed a brand new furnace at little brick <laughs> which has air conditioning which is going to be nice for next summer so we won't That's all huge. melt but then they sawed holes in our soundproof walls and now they put this big looks like a the tin man threw a leg in here or something yeah. like that so but we got uh, i dutifully collected egg cartons from uh, the little brick kitchen for about a year we had a giant ass stack and then the guy in charge of the project was like gross who would use this for soundproofing and went and bought real soundproofing stuff i think like another maybe month we ordered our tables so they're going to come in yeah. here custom table so they'll look fly on screen the two guys in the goalie recorded yesterday it looks slightly alarming you know it had some bright spots and sure there could some, be a beheading in the video like we'll see what happens you never know yeah. the audio quality of the mics i think we've we've we may have got that sorted out but i think in the long run we're going to put a whole bunch of oiler shit up in here and the parts you can't see so yeah. if, to entertain ourselves we're gonna have two blinding uh what are those called box lights yeah something like that Whew, they're bright when they're on they are way damn yeah, yeah i just turned them on this is a podcast so people can't see it like but. how do people talk on camera it's when very distracting it's alarming it's jarring actually it is like jarring. The, yeah looking at where tyler's at right now he has got two huge screens with all kinds of moving shit going on now we might do some ghetto stuff here on track but this is a legitimate operation now. man okay so we bought the roadcaster a few months ago and that was big yeah. i was hyped huge. about that but then combining it with a laptop, like you can't use the Rodecaster to its full ability when yeah. you don't have like a good computer hooked up For to it. For sure. And now Mike A, the big podcasting tech guy who is like a fucking wizard. Yeah. Man. I love that guy. He hooked us up with a dual monitor, big ass, like all this. It's like a supercomputer I'm running here. I feel like Dr. Dre. I, yeah. So I'm like the old guy now who's like, don't keep the door open. You're cooling the whole neighborhood. And like the price of everything pisses me off. <laughs> but like this computer. It's legit. I know a lot about computers and hardware and that type of thing. That's why I don't know anything about girls. This setup is fucking legit. There's been no expense spared on the hardware side of the operation. What are you holding right now? Yeah, Tyler's holding this. Like, it's got a cool buttons on it. I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy. I'm looking at a thing right now that has... 24 white buttons and 24 black buttons. Mm. I don't know what any of them do, so I'm just going to put it right back down. But there's a there's a purpose for that, I'm sure. So who do, who knows how to run that if you don't? Um, Mike A does. I, well, I actually do know what it is. It's so that when we're doing video stuff, yeah. you can quickly change from scene to scene. It's like a little ah. keyboard thing, hotkey, whatever. So this whole rig down here, we can stream live from multiple cameras, which requires a lot of computing power. Yeah. We can put it out live on Twitch. We can put it on Facebook. We can record video for later editing. All the editing software comes installed on this machine. Yeah. If you tried to build this 15 years ago, it would have cost you a quarter million bucks. 
Like the cost of things like this has just gone through the floor and you just need to have the, the know-how to put all this shit together, which luckily Mike A has. Well, to yeah. That, like to that point, like I bet back not even that long ago, radio stations were running on less than what we have down here. Well, that's I'm what guessing. I was going to say. Like, I think about what we need to run the radio station at 1260. And honestly, like this roadcaster could do it all. <laughs> and it's staggering to see like something this size and then compare it to like the radio board and be like, these two things are more or less doing the exact same thing. Like, you're right. The cost, like this was under a grand. Like, yeah. it, it's crazy how much all this stuff has kind of come down. And maybe that's why there's like a rise in the amount of podcasts you see as you bear with me with some industry talk. But like anyone can really like set this shit up. Yeah. It's pretty You got to have the platform on the other end though yeah, to distribute. To, yeah. That's, and that's the only thing. And w so not only has the hardware cost fallen, but you also now have smartphones, the ability to distribute your content. It is a different yeah. world. It's a totally different world now in the media industry. People always say like, oh man, you know, radio's dying or this is dying. TV's dying, all this stuff. It's not dying, man. It just changes. It's and pivoting. Like, it, it, it is. It's pivoting to online. Like everything is. If you have, if you have the ability to create content now, I think you have a lot bigger opportunity than before where you had to convince the bosses that yeah. you deserved it. Now you can just get your own mic, get your own keyboard and get to going. Even, On the back, other even backing up before we get into the podcast studio, it's pretty interesting, Wanya, to like, how many years have we been at Little Brick now? Four. The first time you brought me in this building <laughs> compared to where it's at now is pretty alarming. Go on. Well, I remember being where the cafe is now and you were swinging a sledgehammer of just random bricks and shit that were down here. Down here in the basement where we're at right now, there was basically a meth lab set up in one of these. There buildings. literally was right out there, an operating meth lab. Hmm. So you need just, to make meth. I well, know. well, they left their instructions, so we, we kept those. Yeah. But I just, I think it's interesting to see how it's involved from this corner where we're at in the basement it used to be all nation gear and it was just jam packed with yeah. bullshit. And now there is a podcast studio that's only going to get upgraded. It's only going to get better. And I'm excited about it. It's interesting. We're grinding. I just had like a flashback of a memory into the, my second ever time here. It was when you guys first hired me. I was just going to do oil king shit. And I came here and bag milk. You were like, Oh, let's, I'll take you downstairs. We'll hook you up with some nation gear. And for uh, someone who spent like all their paychecks from working at lids on nation gear for like three years before good that, show, good mm, show. I was stoked. And yeah, I remember coming down and where this room was, it was literally just like shelves and like Gregor heads. Yeah. Yeah. We kept the Gregor heads. Don't worry yeah, about I that know. Tyler. <laughs> They're around here somewhere. Absolutely. It's interesting though, because you can make the, the basement here at little brick has just taught me. You can really make anything into anything. We're so jammed for space, right? We were doing the podcast yeah. before in our shared office that like a third of the team works in. And some days you go in there and there's five people. And some days you go in there, there's no people. And then when there's five people, you have to record a podcast in there. I was down here cleaning shit out one day thinking like, where the hell are we going to put all of our new team members? And I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. We're just going to throw everybody down the basement, which is probably illegal. It since isn't. We've made it legal. But, you know, this is a good podcast studio and this is a good video studio, too, as long as we can make sure that the soundproofing is there. You can buy new lights. You can buy six inches worth of foam to bring it off the walls. We got a yeah. beer fridge we're going to install. We got some old racks. I'll place chairs over there. We still got to yeah, install. Yeah, those are still sitting up there, too. And an Anaheim Ducks hockey bag. I don't, I don't really know why that's there, but it is. Well, There's allow me to tell you about my good friend, George Paros, who let me have that bag one really? time. Yeah, when I was coming home from California. I was like, what am I going to carry a whole bunch of T-shirts in illegally across the border? And he was like, I know. Take this duck. To My old practice bag. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, so now that we have got over our studio a little bit here and drooled over it nicely for the listeners, do we want to get into the fact that there was an Oilers game last night? Wow. Hockey's back. He is back. Just in time. Podcast studio done by game one of the preseason. Unbelievable. We are back. That's Coom. <laughs> he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. He's not back. He's actually working in communications now for the Belfast Giants. I saw that. He basically walked in. I was just like, did you just tell him you're Canadian? He's like, kind of, yeah. He's like, I was like, I'm Canadian. I wrote for a hockey blog. I edited it. Give me a job. And they're like, cool, you can have one. Nice. Are you actually, serious? Yeah. I haven't talked to him since he left because I'm actually like really heartbroken that he left me. But um, he's, wow, that's Communications really cool. director, Belfast Giants. He's basically doing like blog posts and updates and stuff for the Belfast Giants. Are there any oil ex-Oilers on that team? Yes. Curtis Hamilton. We should get Curtis Hamilton also on real life. Also, uh, Liam, Liam Reddick. Yeah, Liam Reddick. We should have both these guys on real life at some point now that we have the in with Coom. 100%. That's true. And we, we have should. the roadcaster so they can call in. They can Skype in from overseas and no one gets charged long distance minutes. Mm -hmm. What's next? What are they going to think of next? A pie that eats people? Could be. Well, so AI. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Then that we just replaced with AI bagged milk. That's <laughs> yeah. ten yeah. times funnier. You'd In probably ten do years, way better. yeah, there will just be AIs of all of us who sit down here twenty four seven crushing out content. There's just a blinking light and me sitting yeah. beside it drinking a coffee. Like what happened, to everybody? Oh yes, no, we've evolved. It's it's all good. As long as that light's blinking, all thirty eight sites are writing and making audio. But it will be interesting to see even 10 years from now where this kind of equipment is, where in 10 years, the roadcaster, which we love is going to look like a piece of shit. It's going to be a typewriter 10 years from now. I think that on the hardware side of things, like you have the processing power increasing like it is right. And then the cost is falling. But realistically, if you showed that LG monitor on the left to somebody from 2005, they wouldn't be like, Holy fuck. That's so different. It's like sort of hit a maturity point. Yeah, there's that as well. That looks like sort of the same. I think that down here, the equipment that we have down here, I think 10 years from now, some things will have changed, but I don't think necessarily that, as long as this does the job. Mm. But then who knows, too? You could talk about how the audio equipment that you would have needed five years ago, you'd be like, well, does that stream on Twitch? And you'd be like, what's Twitch, right? Yeah. See, I think that 10 years from now, we're going to have your Remchuk thrown on a pair of glasses like we wear, Wanya, and then what's on those screens is going to be broadcast directly to the lenses. I saw, can we talk about this sort of stuff here? Hell yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's real life. I saw uh, Zuckerberg talking about virtual reality and how like the cost of things is going to fall through the floor because rather than going to work and sitting in a conference room and watching on a screen, you can put on your VR goggles, go to yeah. work, quote unquote, and then the screen that you're looking at inside the screen is just, a, it's all virtual. It's going to be like that movie, The Kingsman. Oh yeah? Yeah, they did conference calls like that. Really? I liked it. Conference calls are like amazing that you can have five people all talking for free all around the world to sure. each other. Yeah, absolutely. Phone company bastards. They're gnashing their teeth if they can't get their long distance money anymore. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Remember back in the day, you're probably too young, but like calling people, you actually had to think about how much you liked them. I remember back in the day, I had like a free 10 digit number that you would put in before the 10 digit number that you wanted to trigger free long distance. Where'd what? you get that? Yeah, man. Hacker boy. It was a hack. CIA. Life hack. Unbelievable. The first thing that Jobs and Wozniak ever did was they built a machine that allowed you to listen. Like it played the tones through the earpiece of a phone to trick the phone into thinking that the long distance company was giving you a free call. Really? And they sold it to a bunch of people and then they found out that that was illegal and Wozniak panicked and then like abandoned Steve Jobs and got back and later on it's all a good show. Mm. Hacking stuff together is what breeds productivity and gains in the long run. I look forward to future hacks in the future. Yeah. I enjoy it. I can't wait till we have just podcast equipment where I just tap my head and we're live. And it's done. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in your life, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what that's what I think like the next step is at some point this roadcaster will be like a video roadcaster where like there's a, just a bunch of cameras you set up, you click this one big record button and it's like bang, you're on Twitch and bang, you can throw up this graphic. I think the next step like even using the video stuff for Dusty's thing and like setting that up. Um it, it still is like there is a learning curve to it. Like I've never done video before. I'm like a little comfortable with the general technology from going to school, but in all in all, like it took me a while to like sit down and play with this thing and like figure out what was going on. I think in a few years, the next step is just going to be dummying everything down. And eventually you'll find the roadcaster. Like I said, that is just like, Oh, here's camera one, two, three, four, and bang, you go and you can do your own video cast and you're on Twitch like that. Dope. I snapped, but it was off mic. So, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Do we want to do Oilers now? I was you were at the game last night. I was at the game last night. I went with Rick from the Pint. We Did were... it scratch the itch, even though it's preseason? Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? As long as you're in the building. It, I mean, how many losses have you sat through in your lifetime where you're like, just happy to be here? I like the preseason. I think it's like our playoffs. If you look at our preseason record for the last 10 years, we're a good team, man. <laughs> Shit. No, you just got to go early in the year, first six games. But then I get excited about guys like Ty Raddy because he rips it up in the preseason and then he falls apart. The Who cares? Game. At least you had six good games in the That's preseason true. with him. He was the answer for a he minute. He was the answer for a minute. I'd yeah. rather have a temporary answer than no answer. Absolutely. Well, Tyler, do you like preseason or no? I, I, I'm i I'm like in between you two because there's the part of me that's like, oh my God, hockey's back. Like there's something to watch. Tonight's game's on fucking TV against the Canucks. That's great. Um, but then there's also the other side of me that's like, okay, like you beg milk. I'm... Okay, well, last year, Raddy and Yamamoto ripped up the whole league. There's been years where Anton Lander leads the freaking NHL Good in times. preseason scoring. And then it gets to the regular season, and from game number one, it's all downhill. So I, I'm watching it, and I'm excited, but I'm also just, like, trying to temper my excitement so much. Like, I watched a couple of Joel Pearson's shifts yesterday, and I was like, fuck, if that's the first ounce of North American hockey this guy's playing, and he's looking that good, I am stoked. But then there's part of me that's like, okay, he's playing against AHL players. Same thing like Tyler Benson yesterday. I like Tyler Benson last night. But I just had to keep reminding myself, 
oh man, he's playing against AHLers and they're going at like 75% speed and like all that. So I, I can understand the excitement, but at the same time in my own head, I need to temper my expectations because I dr- I'll drink the Kool-Aid too quick. I drink the Kool-Aid because last night Nuge scored an absolute <sighs> beauty, an absolute beauty. And I don't care if that was the preseason, that goal was sex. It was I so loved nice. It. I drank the Kool-Aid because I'm convinced James Neal is going to score 82 goals. Absolutely. And what I like best about James Neal are his teeth. Oh, have you looked not. at this guy's grill? Absolutely. Those are millionaire teeth. 100%. That's a guy who signed a big ticket deal, won himself a cup, went out and celebrated by getting himself some new jibs. I bet he puts like one of those uh, mouth trays in at night. Keeps yeah. them all nice and tidy. For sure. If Absolutely. he gets clipped, God forbid, this year and any of those teeth break out, we're cool. going to have to have a funeral for that smile. A random aside, I was at an antique mall over the weekend. Mm. Um, and for those who know me, I'm a bit of a jersey nut. Like I collect jerseys. I fucking love How jerseys. How many do you got? Uh, probably close to 30 now. Wow. Um, and I was walking and I saw James Neal Vegas Golden Knights jersey. And I was like, oh, Oilers division rival. Oh, that's a nice jersey with James Neal on the back. So I bought it. Nice. And that's what I did this weekend. I bought a James Neal jersey. But it's on the Vegas school. What did that run you? Uh, it was 90 bucks. So that's not so bad. I know, right? And for a Jersey guy, I'm like, ah, Golden Knights Jersey. That's like kind of cool. The first ever Jersey they've worn as a franchise. James Neal. Ah, and that's why I did it. Did they but. have the thirds on sale last night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. People really? were moving units, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on them? I'll buy anything with the word Oilers on them. So when I when the leak was out there and we were all discussing it around the office and then the leak went out online, I hated them. I was like so anti third jersey i thought they were ugly i was like you messed with the logo never mess with the logo blah 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 and now I'm, I'm the same as you i'm such a fucking sucker for jerseys man i'm looking at it and i'm like if i could get a mcdavid one maybe you know yeah okay i think i might do it and i i hate myself for it because i was so mean to them and i'm just now i'm i mean i feel like it's first of all comical how mad people get about jerseys. i love it it's good it's my favorite people seem to get pissed off if you screw with the piping Oh, like yeah. I've noticed people when I'm looking at like the takedown of the last few Oilers jerseys. Yeah. People get really worked up when you don't have like the tri- stripe around the elbow and yeah. then around the bottom too. Like that seems to be like the classical thing people look for. And the collar too. Yeah. I find yeah. a lot of chatter about the collar. Yeah. And it's if so you fucking funny. have like one big piping rather than three little ones, people are like, this is bullshit. When the Oilers did 16-17 for that playoff run, when they had their orange jerseys, and yeah, I remember the thick blue there. People were like, oh, that's so ugly. You need less blue, more than it's like, holy, okay. I like how the Hurricanes are like, does anybody want to watch hockey if you're not slam dunking at center ice on a basketball hoop we put there? Up there in Edmonton, people are in fist fights over the piping width. Yeah. But I love it. That's what makes this market as passionate as it is. And you know what? The reason why it was probably pretty close to sold out for that preseason game last night? Eh, I mean, it's tough to say who bought and didn't and arrive, didn't show up, but, right? But yeah, yeah, there was definitely some some empty seats. Good buzz. But like, there's yeah. a guy who walked away with 30 G's last night with a 50 50. That is like well, the 50 50 is all that. over the map. You got to be a bloody engineer now to figure it out because now they're showing the big total on the scoreboard oh. with the caveat underneath that it's 50 50, like you win 50. percent I wonder ah. why they did that this year because they're changing 50 50 rules sometimes. Well, so, I did see the 70-30 promo that's coming. So that's right. why, ostensibly, is to show you how much you get that night. Okay, well, then I, I guess that makes a little bit more sense. But when it's 70-30, I'll tell you this. There are some people who will look at like a 250K jackpot and be like, 70% of the... And eh, that might that's throw some like people $2, off. That's like $2,000. Yeah. I love the, I love Edmontonians. God bless us each and every one because it's like... The deal to make you spend $300 to go to a hockey game is that there's a better chance of winning the lottery once you get there. People are like, I'm in. <laughs> Man. <laughs> fucking rights. Western Canada as a whole, fucking, not even Western Canada, the Prairies love 50-50s. You go to a Leafs game on a Saturday night, and I've heard the 50-50 will be like, yeah, 35K, not too much. You go to a preseason game in Edmonton in September, and it's like, yep, 30K. Boom. I went to a Cubs game one time. And there was like one wicket and they were doing the 50 50s and it was a busy game. I think it was like six grand the prize. I just, Western Canada eats it up. All the Edmonton Eskimos have to do is be like, we're starting the 50 50 at 100K and they like sell out the game and there's lines for like the entire first half. It's nuts. I can't lose. People I love say. it. I love and like, that. I remember during one of the playoff games, one of the guys that worked at TSN, Corey Graham, I was walking around the concourse and I ran into him. I was like, hey, what are you doing here? He's like, oh man, 
a bunch of guys from upstairs gave me 20 bucks. They all wanted me to buy them 50 50. I was like, <laughs> in the, the media? The media guys <laughs> sitting up top were like, hey, if you're going down, the 50 50 is pretty big. Can you, uh, Can you imagine if one of them won? And the winner of the 50 50 tonight, Jay Shannon. And he just gets up from the media box. He's waving and runs down. And boom. Speaking um, of the media, the press box, I heard a little tidbit last night that the Oilers, Ken Holland, had his management team sitting on the press box side of the arena this year as opposed to in the Kate's box, as was tradition previously. Now, when you say the Kate's box, you don't mean the one at center ice with all the other boxes. No, no, you no, mean no, the no. ivory tower. Absolutely. Yeah, way up there. Absolutely. So the ivory tower has now been abandoned? I don't know what's going on in there, but the management is now mingling amongst the media, which is a new flavor hmm. for this upcoming season. Yeah, you can't say I hate that. I, you, you, yeah. It's interesting. Well, talking to Gregor, he said just... It's been remarkable how talking to Ken Holland is so different than Peter Shirelli. Dave Tippett is super open with talking to people. The new communication staff is super open to talking to people. And it's kind of nice to see a shift away from the there's us and then there's you. I think it's important. Absolutely. And maybe maybe that is uh, coming off that ivory tower in there. Maybe that signifies the whole like, end of management in that in this market being like we are better than all of you and maybe that signifies the end of the oilers looking down on everyone and being like we are better than all of you and we don't need to they're coming back down to the people a little bit i think one of the cultural shifts that happened sort of inadvertently with mr kate's becoming the owner is that like because he's who he is and he is the way that he is which is he's a Mm -hmm. quiet guy yeah private right private and i'm people have talked to him like one-on-one unbelievable right yeah you don't become a billionaire because you can't communicate it's just like what's your chosen venue and he's good one-on-one or small groups right but i think that when he came into the organization and became owner it almost like infused everybody with like oh i'm gonna be like the boss so if he's super quiet and private and like not forthcoming with information that's going to become the organizational attitude mm-hmm. top down whether you realize it happened on purpose or not i think like that's largely occurred so it's interesting now to see it kind of go back to more of like a more relatable entity, like in the EIG days, right? Yeah. EIG days, remember the copper jackets? Mm-hmm. Remember those dudes? You remember that? You're too little. Vaguely. I remember the end of that era. When the oil were super fucked and Cal Nichols came in yeah. and he was like getting the season ticket drives up and that kind of stuff. Because like the EIG almost took over when Pocklington was still the owner mm-hmm. to try and garner support to keep the team here so they could buy it and they created these things called the copper jackets which is like super boosters of the oilers and they all got super dope jackets and they wore them around her buddy's dad was one phenomenal that's when the Oilers really grew their fan base right it was when they had a sort of grassroots approach to it yeah. i don't think that the city's changed that much that in 2019 they wouldn't do well with a little bit more community involvement no i think only positives would come from that last year they did the whole loyalty brand because they were you know talking about how loyal the fan base has been to the team blah 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 now I think it's almost time for them to step up and reward that a little bit more and be like, hey, playoffs? listen. Well, playoffs would yeah. be great, but <laughs> um, they maybe like reward that a little bit more and be like, hey, listen, we are now going to be loyal back to you because you've been so loyal to us type of thing. It's f- The loyalty brand is a funny thing. I think it it's is. really cool. I got a t-shirt and I have a hat. And that logo is really sweet too, actually. Super yeah. sweet. People who were mad about it, I could understand. I remember somebody was DMing me and they're like, it's like I had a bad girlfriend for 10 years and we're in the final days of our relationship and now all she's able to say is, we've been together for so long. We have to be loyal to each other. Like the yeah. final, but at the same time, they rolled it out this year. The loyalty logo was on the scoreboard and they were pumping the gear still. Yeah, they're keeping it out. I don't mind it. But they also revealed a bunch of uh, new promos last night. Yeah, we should dig into this. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Let's, uh, let's walk through them. So you got your Thursday Thursdays. Okay, so that's kind of the big one. I sent out a tweet about it yesterday. So... uh I had a buddy who sent me the release a little bit early and he was like, oh, the, he's he's an Oilers fan, but he hates the organization. Like, he's always yeah. pessimistic about them. Um, and he was always like, he was just like, oh, like, look at these fucking idiots, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at it first and the Thirsty Thursday on the surface to me is like, all right, you want to reward your fans? They like drinking beer. So, so make the beer cheaper. Beer. Um, the one thing I will add, going into Ford Hall before the game is actually a banging deal because you, you can get the beers for five bucks in there. So I, that's actually the best thing that they've done and that almost not a lot of people know about. Go to Ford Hall for 30 minutes before the game and crush three of those if you want to get a good buzz on. But yeah. um, the $5 like beer on the surface, you're like, all right, it's good because it's a $5 beer. And in my head, I was thinking, okay, it's Coors Light, but you do that for sponsorship reasons. It's probably going to be the tall boys, but it's the small cans, which they usually don't even sell. So now in my head, I'm like, are they bringing in like special small cans just to sell for $5 at like certain concession stands? Like, that part to me kind of sucks. And then you look at the schedule and it's like, okay, they're playing only playing three games. 
And then you look again and you go, okay, it's only until the end of the first intermission. So throughout the course of the year, they're going to play 123, if my math is correct. Uh, yeah, 123 home periods. Plus preseason, which Plus, is my playoffs. Yeah, sure. Amen. Yeah. And then for three of those periods, the beer is going to be like ever so marginally discounted, like by a dollar. I don't know. To me, it's just like, I, I like that they're, you know, doing stuff like this to excite the fan base. But I also think the Oilers fan base is too smart to be fooled by gimmicks. Yeah, because you me, get big bears for four bucks. Where? I don't know. The past? Maybe. Um, they used to be to me, like the US fan base is too smart to be fooled by gimmicks, and this was gimmicky. And like you were trying to pull a fast one on the fan base and get them to be like, "Yeah, cheap beer, woo!" And so, according to the release, it is enjoy cans of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, three hundred and fifty-five mil cans, for only five dollars until the end of the first intermission. Beer available on con- from Concourse Hawkers only. Bring your cash. Oh, only cash. So cash only. So it's going to be cash only. So get people going to the ATMs. Like to me, there's just so many layers and asterisks to this whole thing that it's like, it feels greasy and I don't like greasy. All right, let's move on to. No, wait, 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 so wait. No, hold, just hold your horses. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at this like a hacking way. So mm-hmm. if you're trying to hack something, yeah, you look for one single vulnerability and you exploit that. You're never going to take down like the whole thing, but you're mm-hmm. just looking for like a side entrance into it. What you got to do is game this shit. So if they're like only going to be nice to us for three periods of 100 and whatever the hell it is, you need to make sure that you exploit the system. Bring 30 bucks, get six beers, stash them under your seat in the first period, and then make a show of cheers in your pals, the whole game with the cheap Finskis. But they'll only give you two at a time, so now you're at the point where... And you go bring them down, you get there 20 minutes before the game starts. And you got to go back and forth. Like I don't know, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Um, people are saying like, oh, you just want to rip the Oilers or all oh, you fucking millennial. Nothing's ever good enough for you. <laughs> people were giving it to me on Twitter. And I was just like, no, like I'm just pointing out something that I think was an organization trying to pull a fast one on their fan base. And it didn't work. As somebody who's bought plenty of 1250 beers in my day, yeah. I'll put back a couple of $5 ones. So will I. Yeah. I'll it's go on mild, the first days and do it. It's a step in the right direction, right? And I think that if you're looking to see organizational change, if it stops at this, yeah, it's poor form. If this is the beginning of doing a bunch of new shit. So to that end, the Fridays. Yeah. Friday, we've got a third jersey Fridays. Celebrate Fridays when the Oilers wear their brand new third jerseys, which we discuss a little bit. I They're growing on me. I never had a problem with them to start. I understand what a third jersey is all about. It's about moving units. It's about selling some merch. I get all that. But you know what? As soon as the promo video came out and I mm-hmm. saw Connor wearing one, I saw Leon wearing one, I saw Nuge wearing one. Okay, I'm in. And James Neal wearing one. Mm, with mm. that smile? Those teeth? Yeah. Get out of town. I think that having the third jersey is great. I wonder if it's enough to get people to come to a game. So if you're sitting at home on your couch, you're like, got my 70-inch TV here, got my Skip the Dishes app on ready. Like People have the capacity now to set up a very nice program for themselves at home. And going to games, I think they really have to turn the in-game entertainment up. Music is a lot like this, yeah. right? When I- I'm thinking specifically of our friend, uh, longtime nation reader, the towel boy. Have you ever see the setup that he's got set up in his garage? No. Man, he's got a projector in there. He's got like lazy boys and shit in there. Yeah. It is a whole situation. Does he can't park his car? Yeah, who needs a parked car when you're watching the other <laughs> No, 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 no. True, 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 true. But to your point, though, it's like one of those things where I've seen so many nation citizens send us pictures of their basement that are completely decked out. Yeah. Great sound system, great TV. There's jerseys everywhere. You've got your beer fridge there. They have to work to get you to leave the basement. Back in the day, you would go and see music. You could only see it live, right? There's no recording technology. If you want to hear Beethoven play, you got to go see Beethoven play. Then they invent the phonograph. And musicians are like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to being a musician because now you only have to buy my CD or my, my, my CD, my record once. And then you never have to come see me again. I'm fucked. I can't make a living. Not realizing there was way more money to be made in records than there was in touring. Then record sales invert again, and it's free to get music largely because of Napster and shit. And everyone's freaking out because now if they're giving away their music or it's like way less money for streaming, what are they going to do to make money? Bands are killing it touring now. Mm -hmm. Because like, if you want to be a musician now, you better be prepared to tour. You're not going to make any loot. You can't just sit in your recording studio and have money come to you. I feel like sports is midway through that secondary transition of like, I'm going to go to the game. This is how you start out. Then it's like, oh, wow, the games are on TV. That's novel. Or the games on the radio. And, and, and like the Bru- or uh, the Blackhawks, the old owner, Bill Wirtz, he didn't want them to broadcast any home games because he figured people wouldn't go. 
So I think things swung once you had like universal availability of games on TV. People started working on their, you know, in game or their home experience rather. But I think it's going to swing again where you got to make it 10 times more exciting being at the game than staying home. Well, especially if you've been to an arena like, I mean, we're doing the nation trip to Vegas and I, it's Vegas. I get it. But Wanya, you've been to a bunch of different arenas. If you go to an arena where it is absolutely popping and banging in there and then you go to one that's not, you'd be like, man, they got to step up their game. They need to work. They need to work. You can't take advantage of people's money because going to an Oilers game or going to any sporting event in general is expensive. When you look at somebody who's taken like their three kids to a game, Oof. I'm like, man, I respect the commitment. Like you're you're trading away a G for like one night of three hours. Yeah, we had a good few shifts in the thir- first period, and then we went downhill from there. And that's a grand. Yeah, um, and back to the third jersey thing again. My beef with this one is. They're advertising it as a promotion. Yeah. Is it, that enough to make you come to a game? Like, I'm going to see me, the third. You know what would have been interesting with this is if they're like, we wear the third jerseys on Fridays. And if you come to the game on Friday, fit, third jerseys are 15% off. And we got a little bit of a run of merch as well with that cool new orange logo. That's also 15% off. That's a promotion. Yeah. Just being like, we're going to wear the jerseys. <laughs> That's not really a promo. I do like it. It's now featuring like, shin no, pads. There's yeah. no enticement to come to the game. You can sit at home and like you said, watch it on your 70 inch TV. But it's a start. It is. It's a start. Like if the Fridays thing, have a, a special thing and mm-hmm. Thursdays have a special thing and Saturdays have a special thing. What's Saturday? Saturday is super split Saturday. The Oilers famed 50, 50 draw will be offering a variable split for Saturday games, ranging from a 60, 40 to a 70, 30, giving you the chance to win even larger pots with a greater take home share. This goes back to Western Canada. Absolutely loving 50 fifties. Cause you know that the lines for 50 50 will be extra long on Saturdays. Cause people will go, Whoa, instead of 90 K you're telling me I can win 125 K. I can't wait to see what some of those totals could turn into. Like if there's a big hockey night in Canada game, say against, I don't know, like a battle of Alberta or something, watching people spend money on 50 50 will be hilarious. They got to pivot 50 50 so that they can work with the gaming and liquor board to be able to sell the tickets online. If you had a 50-50 app that they could push out to people and you could play the 50-50 from anywhere and win, like, buying online. There's, like, weird lottery rules now where you can go online and buy lottery tickets to, like, the full home lotto and stuff. And before, they didn't ever want to do it online. They should roll a 50-50 app out so you could just buy it from the convenience of your seats the and Blue also Jays be able to buy that. it from home. Yeah, The Blue Jays, the Bruins do that. I think the Canucks do that. But don't quote me on Canucks, but I know the Jays and Bruins were two teams that off the top of my head I know do that. Can you buy, like... 50 50 to the Jays from Alberta? No, you have to be in Ontario because it's ah. Ontario liquor gambling, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, my problem with that would be you want to get people going to the games, right? Saturday night, if you can buy the 50 50 from home, maybe no one's being like, oh, we should go to the game because the 50 50 is going to be huge. Yeah, but, but when your boy Bag Milk's a little banged up at home on a Saturday night, all of a sudden I'm dumping all kinds of shekels into that 50 50. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's like way the to make prize is five times as much money or whatever because people yeah. can buy from home. I don't know. Is, is that enough? Is, is a 50-50, the fact that you can go and buy a lottery ticket, enough reason for you to go to a game? I don't know. I just know I'm looking in December. They have home games, back-to-back Saturdays, against Toronto and Montreal. Oh, it's on it. Oh, Those so you know, 50-50s are going to be bad. During the Christmas break? During the Christmas break. Oh, man. Well, it's the, sorry, no, it's the 14th and 21st. I don't know what Mr. Cates did at NHL head office to get his way sometimes. It's like when Connor had a week off after his 21st birthday. There's like some residual favors he's owed somewhere along the line. Can you give me a Toronto and a a Montreal game right during the Christmas break or everyone's off? Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, February 29th, a Saturday against the Jets. That'll probably be good. Yeah. Um, I feel like the Columbus game might not have the same pull, but that's all their Saturday home games. Again, they have like four. Looking ahead, we've got Send Off Sundays. Where this is decent. I like this one. I don't as well. mind this. Every Send Off Sunday, we will send one lucky fan in attendance to win it, or uh, we will choose one lucky fan in attendance to win an exclusive trip for two to see the Oilers take on that night's opponent in the opponent's home rank later in the season. Dope. Your like check. You want to poo poo this somehow or other? Is okay, it an economy like a- or first class <laughs> ticket? No, no. Give me. <laughs> let me try to come up with a negative take. Um, <laughs> You're running a promotion that only benefits one person. Two people. Two people out of 18,000 in attendance. Holy fuck. What do you want to give everybody a dollar? <laughs> Here you are. What am I going to do with this? Well, if you wanted Buy to a be ninth negative. of a beer. So if your beef then is that they should give away more than one trip. No, I think it's a good Lousy promotion. millennials always it's want cool. more. That's it's cool. cool. 
remember back in the day when they do like the fan appreciation nights mm-hmm. and somebody in the crowd, like this is one of the greatest stories of my entire life that ends with a dash of disappointment. But they said uh, first they're giving away a Dodge Neon, which is like a little tiny hilarious yeah. car. And I'm like freshly minted 16, like Ooh. five days past my 16th birthday fan appreciation night. So the first they announced the end of the first or the first break or whatever, they tell you the uh, seat. So it was my seat, but who cares? There's a seat in every row and there's a row in every section. And blah, yeah. blah, blah. Second break, they stand up. They want everybody in the seats to stand up all around the arena. And then they call it the row and it's my row. So I'm like, oh, with my buddy, 16. Like, yeah, man, whatever. I'm going to win a fucking car. And then I'm going to meet girls. It's going to happen for me. Then the third break comes and they're like, we've sent the event team to the end of the row of the winner. They're standing right beside me, like three people over. They're right there, oh. and they're looking straight ahead. And I'm like, oh, man, if I win a Dodge Neon, I'll be the talk of the town. The guy one section over won, and he wasn't even paying attention. And they're like, hey, man, you won a car. And he's like on the scoreboard, and he's like looking at something and talking about his wife. And I was like, that guy's not going to drive this car properly. Yeah. Should have went and fought him. Yeah. yeah I appreciate that Dodge Neon. That motherfucker probably took that thing and drove straight to Ecuador. Well, one thing I'll say about the Oilers is I appreciate that if you go to a weekend game, you have an opportunity to get some kind of increased value, which is a lot better than the kick in the balls and a 6-2 loss from like a year ago. Yeah, and hopefully, like, here's the other thing with Oilers fans. You can give away trips on Sunday. You can up the 50-50 on Saturdays. You can give away cheap beer on Thursdays. And you can wear your nice jerseys on Fridays. If you lose, they're going to be pissed. Everyone except for the fan that won the 50-50 and the two fans that won the trip, they're all going to be pissed because they lost. Results will speak bigger than anything, right? Fully. I, I think the best way to get the morale around here to change, like you say, is to start winning, right? I still think that it's a step yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, it is. Right? If you're at a game and anybody you know wins any of those prizes, like... Even just, like, seeing a good reaction when someone wins... Right? Like, if it's some guy who's, like, all fired up because he won the 50-50 and he's a section over from you and he's cheering and he's yelling, like, that's going to put you in a good mood. And then if the Oilers win on top of that, you're right. You're probably leaving the game going, whew, that was a hell of a time and the Oilers win. Let's go to the Canadian Brew House. What other... Okay, good plug. What other kinds of promos should they run Bag Milk? You got any ideas of what they didn't do that they should do? I would like... I went to a game in Phoenix once. And what they had, and I love it just because I'm a sucker for gimmicks. I love a good gimmick. They had a blimp cruising around. Oh, yeah. And it was just dropping coupons on people. That's great. I they did it. that it at the old pizza. barn at Rexall, right? They would stand at the catwalk and oh, they would yeah. drop parachutes, parachutes yeah. down. I don't want parachutes. I want I want a blimp. Yeah. I want some kind of device cruising around. And when it comes near me, I get all excited. I don't care what's even dropping out of it. They I just want probably stuff. do that. Absolutely. It's easy. Do you remember when that guy smuggled in the helium tank and he retired Smitty's number? No. You do don't? You? What? I don't remember that. What? No. A long time ago when Smitty, I think it was just when he got dealt or maybe it was when he got dealt again, but somebody smuggled a helium tank into Rexall place, made a little <laughs> 94 banner in the bathroom. I talked to the guy on Twitter. It was one of the funniest pranks of all time. He's like, yeah, me and my buddy smuggled in this before metal detectors, went to the bathroom, brought him balloons, filled them up, brought them out in our jackets under our arms, tied them to the thing and then retired Smitty's number oh, and the man, balloons God, went up amazing. and it was like early Twitter days, something like that. But that, yeah, that's cool. I love that. If you were going to do a promo, what would you do on you? I would do, it depends on how much money they make off beer. I honestly think in the long run that beer initially was a very important revenue stream. But when you go to like European soccer matches and there's no alcohol in the beer anymore because they don't want any drama because the TV money is so big, gamifying beer prices would be fun. In like, you, okay, the yeah. beer is twelve fifty. Every goal the Oilers are down, beer gets a dollar cheaper. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. could do something like that, it'd be hard to coordinate with different people and stuff sure. like that. That'd be fun. It'd be fun if, if the Oilers lose, you could take your ticket stub to the store and get 15% off. Yep, that seem, that should be enacted right now. You know, and it's like, well, I went to the game, they lost, I was kind of pissed, but I was able to go and buy the jersey that I wanted for a deal. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. Sure. Punch the guy in the face next to you if he's wearing an opposition's jersey Amen. night. Push Imagine that, stairs, you know. where they encouraged fan violence, and they said, one night a year, you can fuck people up. Yeah, like the purge. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that giant escalator, down mm. you go. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Riot night? They could have Absolutely. riot night. That'd oh, be I'd, fun. I'd go to riot night. I'd be afraid of riot night. I would not go to riot night. Why not? 
because I don't want to get hurt. So you wouldn't go into a mosh pit either, would you? No. You'll I never be a juggalo pits. with that idea. I'm oh. okay with never being a juggalo. <laughs> I was going to invite you to the gathering, though. Doesn't want to be a juggalo. <laughs> Noted. Oh, okay. man. How are we doing for time? Uh, well, I was actually just going to say that. You know who does run great promotions? Our uh, fine folks at Jappa. And we're going to hear from them right now. We'll re- be right back on Nation Real Life. Have you got holes to dig, earth to pack, and roads to build? Then you need to call Jappa Machinery Group. Does your equipment need a service? Yeah, can't fix stupid, but here at Jappa Machinery Group, we can fix everything else. With a full range of parts to keep your equipment running smoothly, Jappa Machinery Group is a family-operated and Alberta-grown business. Here to help build a bigger and better Western Canada. Give us a call or visit us at jappamachinery.com. Jappa Machinery Group. Join the family. All right, welcome back, Nation Real Life, episode 139. We've gone through a lot in the first 40 minutes of the pod. Uh, talked about the preseason. We talked about the new Oilers promotions that are coming this year. And uh, one other thing that's been making the headlines around uh, Oilers Nation has been Daryl Cates uh, coming up, giving a little bit of an update. Daryl Cates spoke to Bob Stoffer and Oilers Now last week, just kind of giving a health update on what's going on with him. Obviously, we saw him at the hiring of Ken Holland. And people were concerned. We found out that he's had a been battling a very serious sinus infection. So Bob asked him about it. And one of the things that I love about Edmonton is the support that people have in a situation like this. And one of the quotes where just Daryl Kate's talking about, he received thousands and thousands of cards and emails and letters from fans and just how much it meant to him and his family. And that's, that's an Edmonton Is that thing. really what he said? Yeah, so his exact quote is, I got thousands and thousands of cards and emails. It's been very overwhelming. My family and I truly appreciate it. Obviously, this has been a battle that I've been working through. And, you know, so going into it, um, he talks about how... Global doesn't have these good quotes, but he talks about how this is... He's finally getting it under control. He's talking about how he's going into a spot where he's healthy. But more importantly... And God bless him for it. He wants to talk about the Oilers and what's important to the people. Yeah. And he wants to talk about how the fans mean so much despite the negative press that, you know, there's been a lack of ticket sales or whatever you want to say. He's been very, he was very complimentary of the fans. So he said, we made all the necessary changes in the off season. We viewed as important to improve the hockey club. They bring enormous stability and experience to the organization. Last week, we talked about Nuge going into his uh, eighth season with 2,000 coaches, nine GMs, and everybody is always new for that guy. The idea, so says Daryl Case, is to complement the core that we have, and we believe we have a core that will be just as good as any in the NHL, specifically referencing, of course, Connor McDade, Leon Dreisaitl, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. All three Oilers. Along with Darnell Nurse and Oscar Clefbaum. Also Oilers. We know that it's been tough sledding for Oilers fans, both off and on the ice, and we thank you for your unrivaled support of the Oilers and your passion for hockey in Edmonton. None of us take that for granted for even a single second, and everybody in the organization plans to turn this around, and when we do, it's going to be very special for us and for Oilers fans. And I hope he's right. I want to see Dale Cates win the Stanley Cup. To get to be successful, as successful enough to buy a pro sports team is one thing, to then navigate the waters of the NHL and actually win the Stanley Cup is even crazier. I think it would be like an awesome, we went through tough times, we had bad things happen, then we got Connor, then we got the arena. It took a few years to get our shit together, but in year six of the Connor contract, whammy, it'd be a good wrap-up of the storyline. Well, and I took a lot of shots at Peter Shirelli, and deservedly so. Yeah. But it's funny how now, with the benefit of hindsight, he backed into two amazing deals for the Edmonton Oilers. Both Leon and the Clefbaum deal. And the Clefbaum deal. Both Drysidle and McDavid are both signed at reasonable terms relative to what they produce, and they will be locked in for longer than all three of those guys in Toronto. I mean, outside of John Tavares. Yeah, but the three young RFAs, Nylander, Matthews, Marner, they're all locked up longer than them, and you could argue on better deals than what the Leafs got them for. Because I remember everybody's like, well, Leon Dreisler was going to be a winger. He shouldn't be making $8.5 million. And all of a sudden, Mitch Marner, big dick swinging at just a shade under 11. Dreisler being as good as he was caught me by surprise. I remember when he signed the deal, I was like, I don't know if that fucking guy is really worth that kind of money. He's kind of a moper. That was my thoughts. Here, I'm checking. He has, the, he has that body language as much as I fucking hate that buzzword, but he does. Yeah. But then he fucking turned into a gun 
and last year at 100 points. Say what you want, man. Like you get that many, you get 50 goals. Everybody can shut up. 100. percent I heard that James Neal scoring. What well, he scored 20 goals? How many years in a row? 11, I think. He's only 11. one of 50 players in the history of the league to do that. It doesn't have guys like him, man. He is like an elite, high level goal scorer. People forget that. That's how he got those teeth. It's the first. Oh. Last year was the first time he shot under ten percent ever in his career. Yeah, he shot about half of that. Like, yeah, he shot five percent. If he would have shot ten percent last year, he would have scored like twenty goals. Rick and I were getting fired up in the stands because you know preseason hockey. Going to go to a game with Rick is hilarious. It's the best. He is always going. Yeah. The, Always Kool Aid and yeah, oh yeah, the best. And we can sit there and talk it freely amongst ourselves because we're in both insane about how the Liam Reddicks of the world are sure to continue on. And you know, when Ty Ratty was lighting the league up, he and I were having post game conferences, certain he was going to win the Rocket Richard. But he <laughs> he was getting a little uh, fired up by the end of the game, and he he noticed that James Neal was the first guy through the handshake line, and then tapped the goalie, and then skated into the dressing room and was gone. And he was like. <laughs> What the fuck, James Neal? Who do you think you are not to come out here and salute the fans? I'm like, calm down, Rick. It's just preseason. I'm sure he has a skate where they do adjust or something to that effect. I thought he looked great. He's so funny. Going to, uh, when we do the Calgary road trips, I'm always with Rick. He's yeah. always like my partner in crime <laughs> and we're sitting there. But sitting in the saddle dome with him, he's going to get me punched in the mouth at least once this season, especially if the Oilers are just trouncing the flames because he is always going. Yeah, and he can back it up. If Absolutely. anybody wants to just stand behind him, he'll he'll punch his way through. Uh, so good. So good. I just, I'm just happy hockey's back. You know yeah. what I mean? It, as, from a content side, from a business side, I'm happy to have things to write about that aren't just complete made up bullshit that we do in August, which is you kind of have to. Tyler, yeah. you do it. Um, do I ever. <laughs> I'm just happy to watch a game on TV tonight. Totally. Why? Do you have to make, you have to make a whole show about a fishing derby? <laughs> Sorry, 12 listeners of the real life podcast. I think that having the games back... <laughs> We've, we have a lot of organizational momentum, too. Yeah, sure. We've completely rebuilt our platform. Yep. All 16 sites are on a single platform. Leveled up our staff. In Leveled a lot up of our different staff. different areas, yeah. whether they're front-facing or not. Absolutely. We've brought back the edit button. Amen. We've done a bunch of stuff behind the scenes to encourage the other sites to be growing at a good clip. What was the number of sites that were growing out of the number of sites that we have? We only had four sites in the entire network that were flat in terms of traffic or slightly below where they were last year. And then the other ones were all the up. The other ones were all up. Led by the damn Leafs Nation. Led by Leafs Nation. These motherfuckers. It's amazing how you can have a site like that that we've been operating since probably like 2011 and getting one new editor-in-chief in, he leads to organizational change. He brings in yeah. writers that he likes. But you know what it is? It's It's... He's as excited about the Leafs as we all are about the Oilers. <laughs> no, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. He, I know what he thinks. He thinks he feels. Yes, no, it's true though. But when you look at like just organizational change takes time. Yeah, right. And it's a lot of little things that add up at the end to a big result. Mm -hmm. And things like cheap beers every fifteen games for a minute or whatever the hell it is doesn't maybe look like a lot in its entirety. But if it leads to more shit, a lot of stuff can happen. Absolutely. What else do you want to talk about? So a gentleman on Twitter, I literally just found this. I've sent it out on the real life Twitter and on my Twitter. Good job. Um, at or Austin Havens at a underscore R Havens, H-A-V-E-N-S. Uh, he got married over the summer. Bravo. I went to high school with his brother. Congratulations. I think, actually. Um, so he got married over the summer. Instead of doing a guest book, he and his wife got a custom Oilers jersey with their now last name Havens on the back. And had all their wedding attendees sign it. Oh, that's sick. That's cool. And now it's going to be framed up. But that's cool as fuck. That's I just wanted cool. to share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you put like that on the people, Insta? Uh, uh, I'll get that on the yeah, Insta. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that's a hell of an idea. I've never seen that before. But again, Oilers fans always come up with new ways. Well, it's kind of like we talked about that for this very studio where we want to have something where all our guests come in and sign it and we get to keep it forever. It'd be nice. I've got a stick signed by Kelly Buckberger. Amen. And somebody else signed it too. Sean Bell. Oh, Sean Bell. That's right. We could run sticks in here. Mm -hmm. We could do a stick rack. I just don't want to sign the wall because my buddy Josh, we used to all sign the wall in his garage and then he moved and then he had to cut the drywall out and then move it to his new house. Could we not have like something that was just fastened to the wall that's easily removable? Sure. We could all sign the brick and then if we ever don't want it, nah, maybe not. I just like the idea of sticks or something like that because we could also auction them off. Yeah. yeah. If you I had like that. the 2020 Nation Real Life stick that we had everybody sign. If you're one of the 12 listeners of this podcast and you have an idea of something we could do and we have guests here, Hit us up on uh, on social media at Nation Real Life. 
Yeah, we are always open to suggestions and ideas and ways to improve things and make things look sweet. We could encourage people to pour their drinks on uh, your M Trucks Roadcaster. Absolutely. I'm sure you like that. Is that thing waterproof? No. I'm pretty <sighs> sure it's waterproof. Gotta get the 2021 model. I mm. keep my water bottle. You can see it's out of arm's reach, so I can't accidentally knock it over. That Walking down here, Bag Milk and I, I was doing an Insta story to show everybody the walk <laughs> to the studio and then proceeded to smash my head on the, like, the, the wall. Overhang or whatever the yeah. hell it was, and spill my coffee everywhere. Ah. I caught captured it all on camera. You did, but uh, you don't want to see that. It was shit. well. It was interesting because I'm very happy to be average sized when I'm down here, but Dusty, Matt Cassian, they're big boys. Yeah. So we need to get them helmets or something for when they're down here. Well, we have some pool noodles. Yeah, the over pool there. noodles I thought was a nice touch by Mike A's to prevent people from gouging their brain out on that thing. The, the, that thing would be a giant metal oh, furnace. Yeah, no, well, yes, and then they also uh, the, the ducts the, the and all that. The um, yeah, so we, yeah, we're gonna pad that up. But uh, the last thing, maybe I wanted to get to ten minutes to go. Do we? I know me and you, Wanye, aren't caught up on Big Brother because we haven't seen Sunday's episode. We be very careful. I can't know anything. That's okay. Um, I can avoid spoilers. But what we do know, as I think back, was that there was a decision to be made. There was a big blow up in the house, which I've only seen very little of yeah. from Thursday. Yes. I think they talk about that a lot on Sunday, don't they? They t- talk about it a lot on Sunday, not to give anything away. Well, Tommy and Mickey kill each other. It's It gets heated. There's a lot of yelling back and forth. There's a lot of accusations. There's a lot of just straight up lying to people's faces. And there's all the things that you expect from the final five in Big Brother. Wait. Previously on Big I forgot to hit the button when we started talking about it, and I just really wanted to use that. Oh, yeah, but no, continue. That's a quality button. It's just one of those things that, like, we're, we're down at the part of the season now where it turns very cutthroat. Very. And that's what, I, that's what I wait kind of all summer for. So when these heated arguments blow up, I love it. So you guys are in for a treat when you get to watch Sunday's episode because they're, they, they go hard in the paint. Mickey is now crossing the line into all time best Big Brother players. He is. Yeah, man. Yeah. He is. That stunt, I guess, is that that's when he did you see the 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 shows before Sunday? Yeah. When he gets up out of his room and goes and eavesdrop down the hall. That's who for him to be with it enough, like if that was me, I'd be like, Well, I'm going to sleep and hopefully I'll wake up and have one half a million dollars. Like for him to be sitting there, realize what's going on, tiptoe in, and then use the information that he heard with Tommy saying he'd throw an HOH. To use that against him the way that he did, this guy could be as smart as he is strong, man. Um, the the thing it's I his like, game to lose. It is a hundred percent. It's his game to lose. The thing I like though was in Tommy's exit interview how he kind of said like, "Listen, I played the game with integrity and honesty. Mickey didn't, but I respect it because that's Big Brother, man. Like I think Tommy understands to put aside game and." personal feelings a little bit like I, I liked his exit interview is my point i hate when people pretend that lying in big brother is the worst thing a person could do isn't that the whole point yeah it doesn't have any reflection on your life outside the house no no you're playing a game. even cliff who is as honorable as dude as it ever mm-hmm. comes to you can see he's starting to have to make hard decisions too yeah and you know sticking out for nicole and making sure that they went through to a final four he's gonna have to cut nicole loose at some point and he, he can th- bring her what to the end? Yeah, I don't know that he's strong enough, is he? Well, yeah, actually, he might not win the comps to get her there, but if like the opportunity was there, yeah, it's crazy that she won last week. It is. Um, what did you think of her decision as a whole to believe Mickey and for them to get out Tommy and keep Holly? This, to me, that's what Wanya is talking about, where Mickey is one of the best. Yeah, like, do you, you think that was a mistake for Nicole? Oh, for sure, absolutely. They should like like Christy. Mickey should have been on the chopping block for everybody all season long. Yeah. yeah. How many wins does this guy have to rack up before you eventually make the decision to cut him? Well, and because he wasn't able to play in the HOH because he'd won the week prior and then they'd put Holly up, remember? That's the perfect time to get Mickey out. There isn't a person in that house that could sit in the final two against him and win. The fact that he didn't go home in the double is staggering. You could see, too, Shocking. he thought he was going to go. Because remember how then they, they called who had to play in the thing then he had to go to the side and, yeah. and they were like, Mickey, you can't play tonight because you're former HOH, he was just sitting there looking like, I'm fucked, I'm going home for sure. Yeah. I don't know who thinks they could sit across and make you in a final two and beat him in the house. I don't, I'm, yeah, you're delusional There's if you nobody. are. So nobody then you got to get that motherfucker out. I mean, remember when they got rid of Jessica and they're like, we got to get rid of her because she said she's going to get rid of guys. That is the feeblest logic ever. They're just yeah. like, we got to get rid of Jessica. The guy that actually presents a threat to everybody, he just won so much shit, no one could take shots at him. 
And he's had the ability to convince people, not only is he winning stuff, he's had the ability to convince people to get rid of players like Jessica, who really did nothing all season long. He also, and I mean, some people are going to be like, that's terrible, bedded two women in the first three weeks. Na, 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 yeah. Na. Like, what what's going hell? on with that? How many times does that happen in Big Brother history? Never. And now, like, I, <laughs> he's breaking up with, with uh, Holly. Yeah. And you see in his head, he's like, I can't let anyone know that there's drama between us. Like, to bring your show that far, then have a massive ass fight and still try to carry them through to the end. Like, I'm not saying he's a good dude. Yeah, I would say I don't necessarily like him as a person, but as a player. But he's one hell of a player. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he's going to go down. Like, if he does finish this off and he wins it, like, one, if he's in the finale, it's going to be a boring ass finale because it'll basically just be like, why Mickey's won? Unless the only reason I can think that he wouldn't win if he's in the finale is if the jury, whatever, like Christy's in the jury house now. Yeah. She is very good at manipulating people. If she can somehow get a bitter jury, like they had with Paul and his two seasons where they're like, well, he puppeted everybody and that makes me sad. And then they vote for whoever. But Mickey hasn't that. really puppeted people. He's just driven over everybody in his way. Yeah, it was a close. massive blessing that he wasn't the one who got Christy out. He didn't do a yeah. backstabbing Christy because yeah. I don't think she's going to the jury house being like, fucking Mickey got me. And he's smart because he recognized that and yeah. said, like, I've seen her campaign and she campaigns hard. We got to get rid of Tommy. Um, I'm interested to see what, well, like, I'm ahead of you guys. So I'm curious to yeah. see what you guys will think after you see Sundays and how things play out a little yeah, bit yeah. because there's there was interesting developments on Sunday in just terms of general gameplay and how the options could be with how things work out that it's going to make for an in interesting finish. I think Tommy fucked himself. I think that he could have stayed. He Holly, have. Holly was talking to him. Nicole sorry, was talking to him, wanted to keep him around, stuff like that. Why on earth did he go and tell everyone that he knew Christy? That was such I swear he just wanted drama because he was bored. I literally think he kind of said it to me. He's like, I was lonely. Yeah. And I was like, man, I get it. And I can't even imagine putting myself in that position where you're locked away from society for that long. But you need to have the. I think that was a mental lapse. And if he was a bit more like mental... Especially since mental he had done, discipline. Especially since he had done such a good job of containing that secret Shit. all season a long. Nobody job. had any inclination that those two knew each other. Even during that whole episode where Jack's like, it's, not, it's how you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, even during that whole thing, nobody was suspecting it's those two. It's how you other. said it. Yeah, and I think that he's, he was bored. I think he just got to the point where his emotional statements, oh, he's so dramatic. I love it. Like when, when Christy was in the shower and he was like, you can think of me or you can see me and think of home. What? what? You can see me and think of home. Huh? Like he's so dramatic. It's great. I love that when he came out to meet Julie, he did a cartwheel though. Yeah. That was great. So that was just such a Tommy way to end it. I'm going to miss his little pirouettes and his leg kicks and all that jumping shit. He does. I don't fun. watch the show, but I would love it if that guy went on Dancing with the Stars. Sure. Why not? He's a star. Absolutely. More than some of the stars on Dancing with I mean, the Star. He's a, a star. Low bar on that oh, anyway. low bar. Christy Brinkley just like blew an Achilles heel on that show Did and they replaced really? her with her, with her kid. Oh, her boy. kid subbed in. <laughs> Jesus. Christy Brinkley looks She looks fantastic. amazing. Yeah, amen. Remember when she was in uh, Vacation? You ever mm -hmm. see that movie? Of course. Driving in the Ferrari or whatever it was? Absolutely. I was a little guy watching that movie and even I was like, I think that's what they refer to as a super babe. Mm. Mm. And then my testes didn't descend for another decade. Uh, Testes, I, you getting a little worked up? I, well, that just kind of threw me off. Yeah, but, we could uh, end on that note. <laughs> we we could because we got to a lot. We talked preseason. We talked promotions. Have we, we thrown talked, to our friends over at Indochino? I was just going to say the podcast was yeah. shaping up nicely. It was looking good. Yeah. It was looking good just like you will look good yourself in a brand new suit from our friends at Indochino. Ding, ding, what ding. you need to do, Tyler, I've told you every week and you still have not done it, is you need to go to Indochino to their showrooms any of their showrooms across North America, or you saddle up at Indochino.com, get yourself measured up, choose your style of suit. Maybe you want to go with a nice double-breasted suit. Maybe you want the penguin tails out the back. Whatever you want, Tyler. You're going to look great. You're going to customize your suit any way you want it. You can put hope will never die on the inside, just like Jay did, or you can put a joke on the inside, just like Chris, the former intern, did before he took his suit and ran. You get measured up, you customize, you submit your measurements onto the website, though they are stored there forever. Wedding season comes around every year, my friend. Mm -hmm. Every single year. So you go to Indochino.com, get yourself a new suit, and within two to three weeks, you will have that baby at your doorstep, wrinkle-free and ready for action. Perhaps you wear a brand new suit to a game on a Saturday night and you walk away with a 70-30 split on that 50-50. Not only are you walking away with plenty of money, you look like a million bucks as well. Head on over to Indochino.com, get yourself started. 
All right, that was a hell of a podcast. It was shorter. It was a smaller group than we're used to, but for the first real-life podcast in the new studio, I think that was a great way to start the new era. It's an honor, boys. This is our funny little place down in the basement, and no one can ever knock on the door while we're broadcasting. Because it's locked, and the code is... I won't say... No, I was going to... No, no. I was going to say the door code because it's kind of funny, but I won't. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Episode 139 of Nation Real Life is over.